friends, my name is Linda Dolkey and I'm a demonstrator with Stampin' Up! in Australia. Um, today we're going to be making this cute card and I'm actually showing you how to paint with your soft pastels, which is great because it opens up lots of options of things you can do with them. Here are mine, aren't they cute? Um, in lots of our fantastic colours. So I hope you'll give them a go and enjoy the video. Okay guys, so we're going to be making the card that I just showed in the previous picture. Um, and here are the pieces you're going to need. You're going to need a white, thick cardstock base. So this is just basic white thick, and I am using half a sheet of cardstock, which I have now folding in half again. I'll just use a bone folder to, to flatten that out, and we'll set that aside. Okay, then the other pieces I have, I have um, a piece of Daffodil Delight that I've measured to fit onto the front of my card base and this little black piece here that fits inside of that. I've also cut a couple of dies in advance. So this one is, these are from the Always dies, which is appropriate because this is what that says, Always. And the dies include, how many are there actually? Uh, 13 dies and they've all fallen around here but here's the always that i'm using and you'll see that there's actually two there's the fine detail always and then there's this one that provides like a, a layer behind that so they've got that with the word love as well we have the word love and then we have the one that provides the layer behind so those those ones match each other and then we've got some others here that match the matching stamp set so the matching stamp set is called Forever and Always. Now these items are actually about to retire. And that's why I wanted to do this video now before they do. Um, they will be retiring on the 30th of June, 2021. And then I've also got this little piece here of black and white paper from the True Love Designer Series paper. So let me just quickly show you where you'll find these. This catalogue is retiring as of this week, the 30th of June. But before it does, I'm having my final play. And right here at the front of the catalog, you'll find the Love You Always suite of products. Okay, so this is the black and white stripy paper here that I'm using. Um, and then I've also got these, this stamp set that's called a Forever and Always and the matching Always dies, which are also retiring. Okay, they're all going. So let's have a bit of a play with them right now. I'll be putting this onto here in a minute, but I'll come back to that. And then I've also got my stripy piece. I'll set that aside. And then here, I'm going to be showing you today what the point of this video is today is to show you how to paint with soft pastels. Now the pastels assortment or soft pastels assortment are actually a new item in our annual catalog. You'll find them on page 126 and they're right here. And Soft pastels, um, they're comparable to any other soft pastels you might find out there in the market. However, what is nice about these, if you're a Stampin' Up! person, is they are in our special colours. So they are actually going to match your cardstocks and your inks, which gives them an edge if you've already got a few items from Stampin' Up! So um, there are a lot of brights, actually. There's Coastal Cabana, Daffodil Delight, Gorgeous Grape, Granny Apple, granny apple green mango melody now those and poppy parade those are all brights and then we've got a couple of other colors from other color collections we've got mossy meadow which is a neutral and night of navy which is also a neutral so there's eight different colors in the pack and they are in stick form like this you might remember many years ago for those who've been around uh, for a while that we did have chalks um previously that were in little squares do you remember those um, this is kind of the new offering now we haven't had those for a few years these two colors are fairly close but when you use them this one has more orange to it this is mango melody whereas this one is daffodil delight it's just pure yellow which is actually the color that i've used today uh, with my cardstock here then poppy parade gorgeous grape mossy meadow coastal cabana uh, Night of Navy, which doesn't look like Night of Navy, but um, but it is. And then this is Granny Apple Green. Okay, so they're the colours in our pastels assortment. I'm just going to pop them there. Pop that yellow piece aside, and we're going to work on this black piece here first. So I have got this beautiful Forever and Always set, and I'm going to be stamping a couple of the flowers from the set. These two, the big one and the smaller one here. And I'll just pop them... 
on blocks. So I have block D, which is the right size for the larger flower. And then block uh, B is a good size for the smaller flower. Okay, so I'm using B and D, but it's totally up to you. You can use whichever ones you have. All right, so I'm gonna be stamping in Versamark. Versamark being a clear sticky ink that's really great for embossing because we're going to be embossing our flowers on the black. I'm gonna start with the bigger flower and I'm gonna ink it up so it gets plenty of that clear Versamark on it. It doesn't look like anything's going on because like I said, it is clear, but you'll notice that um, this fits quite nicely here in the corner. All right, and you can't see anything right now really because it's it's difficult when um, when you're stamping on black particularly it's very hard to see but in a moment you'll be able to see in fact I might do this um, corner first and then I'll come back and do my second corner I'm using white um, and I'm using a little container I've got my white embossing powder and I'm going to sprinkle this over this part of the card that I just stamped and immediately you'll be able to see that it's stuck to the Versamark ink. I'm just gonna chap it off and give it a bit of a flick over the back so we lose any excess powder, which is looking pretty good. Just that piece like that. And then I'm gonna do the other side as well. If you have an embossing buddy, we don't sell these anymore, but if you have an embossing buddy, you can go over this to stop any static electricity from making powder stick where it shouldn't. Um, but that's totally up to you if you have one of those. If you don't have one, you can see that I didn't use it here before I stamped these and they still turned out fine. So it's uh, it's not a big drama if you don't have one. So I'm gonna do pretty much exactly the same thing except I'm gonna come down from the, the other side. So this one I've gone up and this one I'm going up from this side. And then once again, the smaller flower right next to that bigger flower there. Let's pop it back into our container and pour some more powder give that a tap off and there we go now I find when I'm applying embossing powder a really cool thing to have is just a little bit of a brush that you can get rid of any stray bits of powder that are where you don't want them okay so just like that and then because we're using a little container it's easy enough to just pour that back into the little pot. I've got, got a little bit of an extra flower in there as well, which is from another project, but that's okay. All right, so I'm happy with how this is looking. I'm just gonna pop my lid back on my Versamark. And now I'm gonna bring in my heat tool. And I'm gonna speed up the camera here so you haven't gotta wait for this. It doesn't take too long, but it'll just make the video a little bit quicker so that you can um, watch it happen quite quickly. Okay, that's pretty much done. Um, I do find this is a bit of a tip for you. When you're using white, it can be kind of hard to see when the embossing has, um, it, when it's fully cooked. Um, you might notice when I turn my embossing, uh, my heat tool on that I also turned on the lamp. That helps me um, turn it sideways so I can catch the light of the lamp as it's so you want, you want to have a fairly good light source when you're working with embossing. I'm happy with that though. If you if it's done, you can rub your finger over it. There will be no powder residue left. It's just nice and smooth and we're ready to go. All right, so now we get to do our painting and I'm going to be using my Daffodil Delight, one of these, and I'm going to also need a water painter. Okay, now you can use a brush for this. Um, I do like the water painters though because I've got the water here in the barrel, and if you can see that, um, which I just filled up from the tap. I give it a bit of a squeeze and water starts to come out and I have actually used this one for yellow before I'm just going to actually with a bit of water coming through I'm going to run this along my pastel and pick up some 
of the color. Now you will want it to be not not dripping wet everywhere, but you want it to be reasonably wet so you can get some um, some color on your on your brush. All right, now you'll see it's going to start coloring lightly. And what we're going to do is we're probably going to be building up our color. We might go over it a couple of times just to start to get more color. This is a way that you can color on items on a dark background. And that's why this is actually a lot of fun because there's, there's not that many techniques that allow you to color on a, on a darker background. So I'm just trying to get as much ink here from this as I can. And you can see I got a little bit more that time. So it's a little bit more yellow now. I'm gonna go back over some of these and we're starting to get some color. Now that is probably the easiest way to do it. But there's a couple of other ways you can do it. You can uh, scribble onto some paper or onto a plastic sheet, like a bit of acetate, something like that. And you can also squeeze your water through here and pick up the color off the page. So that allows you to pick. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to pick up some powder and then mix it with the water, okay? And this allows us to get a fair amount of pigment appearing on our page. So once again, I'm gonna speed up the camera so we can do this because I'm gonna go over it a couple of times because each time I do, the color will be, will be stronger and you, it'll stand out against that background a little bit more. Okay, so I'm starting to get a good build up of color here. I'm pretty happy with that. It looks really lovely against the black. I'm just gonna pop my pastel back into the box. Now yeah, let's put the card together. I have got a piece here that is going to go right across here. And I just love, I love yellow and black and white. I just think they look so fresh and fun. So, whoops, there's a door back that shouldn't be there. And I'm just gonna put a row of seal right here across my my piece you can have it wherever you like I've sort of got it so it's just at the very it's pretty close to the middle it's at the top of these flowers here and just making sure that that's actually straight uh, I should have used my grid paper that's what grid paper is for guys to actually help you get stuff straight there we go that's better and then I've also got this always that I'm going to put on to here. So the easiest way to use to do this, in my opinion, is um, either Tombow, which is great, multi-purpose glue, or you could also use um, fine tip glue, whichever glue is your favorite to use. And did I pick up one that was a little bit on the empty side? Yes, I think I did. So let me grab another one. This one's got a bit more in it. That's better. So then just a gentle squeeze so a little bit comes out here and there. You don't need to cover the whole thing, but I want it to sort of be on the, the tops and the bottoms or any bits that are a little bit on the dangly side so that they won't flop around and cause you a problem because you want them to stay where you put them, right? All right. So... 
we are uh, experiencing um, our first week of lockdown here on the east coast of Australia. We've had a bit of an outbreak and so gone back into lockdown again, which is not, you know, it, it is what it is. <laughs> we'll be fine. We'll get through it. We got through it before. We're going to do it again. So, all right. So now I have my always on its lovely background. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to apply a couple of dimensionals to the back of this. And I'm going to pop them sort of in some of these bigger areas where they can't be seen. You don't need many. Three should be fine. One on each end and one in the middle there. Let's turn that over. And I'm just going to have it sitting like this. Now, if you want to, you might have noticed on my original card, I did have another word. Um, you can apply a word from here. So I could say always um, together or I could have forever and always. You can add these extra words and I would just stamp that on a little bit of white with black ink and just cut it out and pop it on the page. So really, really easy to add um, to add that extra word if you would like it. Uh, something I like about this set, I like, I like sets that allow me to build up my sentiments. I think that is always a fun thing to do. And then you've got more options about what it is you want to say, which is pretty cool. This would be a nice um, engagement card maybe, or even a wedding card. If I was gonna make it a wedding card, I'd probably have to add in some bling somewhere, maybe a bit of gold somewhere would look nice. All right, now one last thing I do suggest you do, although I don't have one in reach at the moment, is you might just wanna go over this with a, a soft tissue or a, um, a soft cloth um, to just to get off any extra ink that is sitting on top of your white embossing. Um, it will just wipe off quite easily. I can now attach this to my card base and then my card will be done. See, that's pretty easy, right? It's not hard to do at all. Comes together really, really quickly. And you can do this with all of those colors to create beautiful, beautiful rainbows of color. So if you love the soft pastels, I think they're great. They're another a great option for coloring. They give you a totally different look and they do allow you to color on a dark background. So try, I've used black today, but you could try Night of Navy or maybe Blackberry Bliss. Some of those really strong dark colors um, where your coloring is going to stand out on that background. Okay, guys, I hope that was fun, and thanks for sticking with me today. I will be back with something else for you really soon, but don't forget to subscribe to the channel here so that you'll see when it is that I have something new for you. See you soon. Bye-bye.